Good evening, everyone. It has been far too long since I have said that it is five o'clock here. But after a little bit of a hiatus, I am back to teach you all some excellent drinks, a little bit of history, and then maybe some obnoxious accents and such thrown in as well. Today is an important day for a couple of reasons. The first, and the reason why I'm wearing a blazer, is because I actually went into the office for a few hours for the first time since early March. Um, so that's that's a big win, I'm not gonna lie. I had a little bit of a panic about it, but um, everything was fine, everyone was very respectful, um, and I wore my uh, Shop Local Kentucky mask. You know, Andy Bashir can't be doing that. And then today also, on a more somber but celebratory note as well, is Anthony Bourdain's birthday. We lost this amazing man two years ago on June 8th, 2018. But today would have been his 64th birthday. And I want to celebrate along with his wonderful friends and chefs extraordinaire, and then also just people extraordinaire, Jose Andres and Eric Repair, by toasting to Tony on this day. This is Anthony Bourdain day, and let's celebrate it like Tony would have wanted us to, by eating a little too much and certainly maybe having a few too many cocktails. Now, I know that Tony loved a good Negroni. A Negroni is a classic Italian cocktail. It came about around 1919, well, or so the story says, there's actually a couple of people who claim uh, its origin, but we're gonna go with the Italian version uh, that I'm about to give you right now. A gentleman named Count Camillo Negroni walked into a bar and said, I want an Americano, but I want it stronger. An Americano is Campari, sweet vermouth, and soda water. And so the bartender was like, well, let me just swap out the soda water for a little liquor. And so that marked the marriage of sweet vermouth, Campari, and gin to make the Negroni eponymous after the gentleman who first asked for it. Now the Negroni is a very simple cocktail. It's equal parts of your gin, your Campari, uh, which is a bitter aperitif, and then your sweet vermouth, which is a fortified wine. The nice part also about the Negroni is that if you ever forget the cocktail recipe, it's on the back of the bottle. So it's also very easy to remember because it's just one part of each. So I think y'all need a drink I need a drink and we all need to toast Mr. Bourdain. So we're gonna start out with one ounce of our Campari. Now, another reason that I felt very compelled to do a Negroni recipe was because I think some of you may have seen a few weeks ago, gosh, it might've been over a month ago now, that the normally wonderful and lovely Stanley Tucci decided to stab me and everyone else who loves a Negroni right in the heart by just making it a mockery. First, he shook it. You should always stir a Negroni. A Negroni is to be stirred for a couple of reasons. First off, you don't need to dilute it that much. By shaking, you're really aerating it and you're also just diluting it way too much. And you're gonna be putting this sucker on ice anyways. So why would you shake it in the first place? It's just going to be very watery. So the second thing that I just take such severe umbrage with, and I feel like Tony would too, is the fact that in, when it comes to the gin, which is the thing that makes a Negroni a Negroni, which we're gonna add one ounce of, by the way, Stan Tucci says, ah, now, Add an, add an ounce of gin, but if you don't like gin, you can add vodka and lace it with gin. I don't know what that means. Because if you don't like gin, just don't drink gin. Like why wouldn't you just drink a Boulevardier, which has bourbon in it, or just drink anything else? You could drink a Campari spritz, or an Aperol spritz, or if you just want to drink vodka, drink vodka. Drink, drink a cold vodka, drink it on the rocks, put some soda with it, do one of the million other beautiful things that you can do with vodka. You don't have to destroy a wonderful classic cocktail, sir. Now, the third thing that I take umbrage with Mr. Tucci saying is that you must use a good vermouth. Okay, 
that's fine. Use a good vermouth. Carpano Antica is delicious. Uh, Dolan, money, love it. But he said, don't use martini. Now, I am using martini. Uh, you guys have seen me use this before in Manhattans and in other things that you use uh, sweet vermouth for. Diplomat cocktail, for example, which is coming for you. That one's for you, Tristram, um, and all of my friends at the uh, embassy in Oslo. Uh, but it's fine. Martini and Rossi is just fine. So I don't know why he had to get all up on his high horse about it. So you got Martini and Rossi? Make yourself a Negroni, please. One ounce of vermouth, Martini and Rossi or otherwise, straight into your glass. Now, so we have this beautiful mixture. It's very, you know, red and, and, and mm, it's lovely. And so we're going to fill it with ice and we're gonna give it a gentle stir. So, yeah, and then the shaking, man. Ah, oh, the shaking, the shaking. So many people asked me, they said, Erin, so what, is, what did uh, Stanley Tucci do wrong? And I was like, how much time you got? Also, I'm not gonna squeeze the orange in there because no. Orange juice is not part of the recipe. So we're gonna take our bar spoon and we're gonna give this a lovely little stir. Anthony Bourdain, I, I loved him from No Reservations. Um, that was when I was first introduced to him and I also read his books. And I actually was lucky enough to go and see him speak live in Louisville. Uh, and I took my mom with him and my mom was so mad at me because I got to ask him a question and I said the F word in it. She was so mad. But to be fair, I was quoting him. He said that he had the best fucking job in the world. And I said, so how do you get the best fucking job in the world? And he said, happy accidents. Very helpful. Thanks, Tony. But he did give a nice shout out to Proof on Main, which is a great restaurant in downtown Louisville. Excellent cocktails, great food. He had the bison burger, if you're curious. All right, this is nice and stirred. So I'm gonna be doing this in um, this little cool glass here, um, just because, I don't know, I like, I like how it looks. And then also because uh, this particular drink with the Negroni and the Campari, it has such a wonderful scent that I like to have it nice and open so I can really get uh, every little bit of that scent. So we're now going to strain it into our glass. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm gonna put some ice in it first. So. Honestly, usually I wouldn't serve this over ice, but tr but a traditional Negroni is served over ice, so I'm gonna show this to you. If you don't want the ice, get rid of it. It doesn't make you happy, don't do it. So we are then going to, oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. So traditionally in Italy, they will serve it with a gorgeous slice of orange. Now, other places, uh, especially in America, will do a, um, just a little bit of an orange sliver. Um, you can also do a little twist. Um, I'm actually gonna take just the orange peel and just give it a little express of the oil on top, just so, again, I really make sure that it has this wonderful scent to it because, oh, it already smells so good. That, that sweet vermouth and the gin, it's just all of these really lovely flavors. So to express it, again, you just pinch it here and go right across the top. Just a little bit of that. Now an Americano is actually served traditionally with a lemon and so the reason that you use an orange for a Negroni is because they use the orange to signify that, oh, this is a different drink. This isn't an Americano, this is a Negroni. So it has an orange whereas an Americano, it's got a lemon. So all of that brings me to, we really miss you, Tony. I wish you were here today because I would love to hear what you have to say about this crazy world that we're living in. And um, thank you. Thank you for everything that you've taught me, um, such as encouraging me to eat all of this particular food while I was in Saigon and then I got really awful food poisoning at four in the morning and then the next day I had to crawl through the coochie tunnels during monsoon season. I still love you for it. And please, make sure you're checking in on yourselves. Your mental health is very important, especially in crazy times like this when we're all stuck inside and we're not sure what reopening means and we see the numbers going up. Check on yourself first and then be sure to check on your friends. You know, it's like 
the, uh, remember those things, those airplanes that we were in once? It's always how you have to secure your own oxygen mask before helping everybody else out. Check in on yourself, and if you need to talk to somebody, be sure to talk to somebody. We miss you, Tony. We love you. Cheers to you. Thanks for everything.